Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Lion Tamer, Nerdy Rom-Com Adventure by Jen Lurson, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. Miniature Thirst Trap Am I mistaken, or is that a miniature monster cock? The low, raspy voice startles me, and I accidentally sheer said monster appendage off. Oops, she says with a giggle. It didn't mean to make you slice that oxymoron free. My slight irritation disappears when I look up to see the most beautiful woman I've laid eyes on. Her blue-green eyes are smiling, fiery red hair framing her face. Hi, she says, waving a hand in front of my face, and I realize I'm just staring like a creeper holding a tiny severed dick in my hand. Uh, hi, I say because I'm cool under pressure. I thought I'd found a secluded little spot in the hotel bar here in Mexico City, but I guess not. This is for my job. What the fuck am I saying? Her eyes widen in surprise. (laughs) Wow, what a job. She gestures to the empty seat across from me, and I must nod, because she sits and leans over the vast array of miniatures I'm working on. When working with miniatures, the most important rule is time equals detail, meaning you can't rush something so small if you want it to have a big impact. I've been working in miniature building for years, and it helps me with focus and dexterity immensely. Two things that are vital for a veterinarian when performing surgery on a small frog. They may also help when I'm in certain sexy situations. This woman is very thorough in her examination, but is respectful enough to not pick up any of them up. The detail is striking, and they look like they are actually fucking. What kind of job requires you to make these? She points to a couple in the perch pose. I place my tools down and take my magnifying glasses off. I set the polymer mini-man and his giant penis down on the wax paper that holds the completed figures I've done since sitting here. Currently, I'm on a 12-hour layover from San Francisco to Guatemala, so I've been drinking cranberry juice and sculpting. While not sentient beings, they are, in a sense, fucking. I could just have them connected where they should be, but I like the look of when I make a penis in a vagina opening or mouth and the penetration is legit. She is staring at me, mouth wide open. I guess that was way too much. I have so many questions, but first, what are you drinking? She asks, pointing to my glass of juice. After I tell her my order, she gets us each a new drink from the bar and sits. During this time, I've reattached the previously severed appendage and am am connecting the figures when she reappears. What position would you call that? Looks complicated. Using tweezers, I slide the female miniature across the male's legs and insert his penis into her vagina. Uh, They are in what's called the X-rated position. The man lies flat on his back, and the woman lies on top of him, facing away from him with her legs on either side of his waist. Her arms wrapped around his legs. She is in the perfect position to slide up and down while he has an X-rated view of them joining, hence the name. I realize that maybe I'm being too frank with a stranger when I see the bright red blush across her freckled cheeks. In my family, there was far too much frankness about sex, our bodies, etc., so remembering to have a filter about such things in mixed company is still a challenge. It doesn't help that my friends are all equally open about sex. I'm sorry if that was too much information, I say quickly. No, it was very graphic, and despite having a physical example, the the description helps. She gestures to the finished product in number 77 in my 101 comma suture position series. May I ask why you are creating these dirty little minis? In my line of work, precision and attention to detail matters. Therefore, I create miniatures to keep up my dexterity and focus. Why all the sex positions? I'm sure you'd be able to hone your skills just as well if you had them dancing or doing something more benign. Now it's my turn to blush, and I look at the finished products knowing I must look like some perverted deviant. I like sex, the human form, and have been studying the Kama Sutra for a few years now. The art of making love should be a more popular pursuit, don't you think? She laughs heartily. (laughs) You think it's not popular enough? I think the multi-billion dollar porn industry may disagree. Sure, sex is and always will be popular, but the art of loving someone, body and soul, not just mindless rutting, should be a more universal pursuit. Are you impossible? Implying that a mindless rutting can't be satisfying? She asks like I've insulted her. Not at all, I say. All sorts of sexual experiences have their place. 
a quickie in a bathroom, angry makeup sex, fumbling first times when you don't know the person very well. I'm talking about the art of pleasing your partner, bringing them to blissful ecstasy and giving them all of you. Her cheeks redden again as she licks her lips. You certainly seem to know what you are doing. I guess, I say, and look down at the miniatures again. She probably thinks I am some kind of sex addict. She may not be far off base. Unfortunately, I have no shortage of sexual experiences. I've been with hundreds of women, and I thought I was in love with more than half. Now ask me how many relationships have I had. Two. That's it. My high school girlfriend, Shelby. I know, Sheldon, Shelby, it was a thing. And Susie, my last girlfriend before I moved to San Francisco. Susie and I seemed good on paper. We were friends first, and I actually waited a week to sleep with her. Usually, I sleep with a woman almost immediately. Yeah. I am a serial one-night stander. Not on purpose, although my friend Frank says it's self-sabotaging behavior. I see it more as eternal optimism. No one wants a relationship more than me, and I always have the best of intentions. The same can't be said for the women I sleep with. For them, the connection is physical and temporary. Frank says that because I'm clingy, but also objectively good-looking. My other friend Joe says it's my King Kong dick. They want to try it out, but find they can't handle it. I don't take any of it personally, but I do find myself alone a lot. What is this position called? She asks, pointing to a pair where the woman is on her back, her legs folded under her. The man slides in beneath her, extending his legs on either side of her head, connected on his lap. It's the triumph arch. The man is able to see their connection and attend to her breasts while achieving a deep angle and control of her hips to deep his thrust. I explain, pointing to where he holds her hips. Your attention to detail is impressive. Do you use models or just your dirty mind? She asks, looking closely at a couple in the bridge pose. This reminds me of that movie, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Ah, yes, probably the only time it's been attempted. I joke, but it's a really hard pose. She laughs with me, and I notice she's blushing again. I'm not usually this forward with someone I've just met, but you leave yourself open with all of these miniatures copulating. No need to feel embarrassed. I should probably be the one that feels embarrassment. But unfortunately, my hippie parents didn't allow it. No subject was off the table in my house growing up, and trust and openness was not only expected, but demanded. Wow. So you are basically missing the shame gene. Not quite. I say, there are certainly situations where I'd feel some shame, none that are sexual in nature, obviously. So, if you were caught doing the bridge pose with some limber lady by your fellow miniature makers, you'd be cool with it. I've only attempted it once, and it was in a locked yoga studio, I say, tapping my finger to my lips. I think that I'd feel pride that I could hold the pose as long as I did without collapsing and hope that my fellow yogis would be impressed. Kudos to your sexual prowess. You were okay with public sex, then? Ah, uh, I wouldn't say I'm okay with it, in that it turns me on, but I wouldn't feel shame about someone seeing me finding pleasure with a woman. The thrill of being caught isn't one of my kinks, because I'm not afraid of it, I guess. I shrug and think about the last time I did get caught and how uneventful it was. It was a penetrating woman against the wall of our outdoor shower when Frank opened the door, saw us, shrugged, and grabbed his wetsuit that had been hanging on a hook next to the lovely woman's head. I never saw her again. You are a fascinating person, she says, draining her drink and standing. Thanks, I think, I respond, standing with her. I wish I could say the same about you, but since you've told me almost nothing about yourself, I'll label you a mysterious person. Her smile is wide and only accentuates her beauty. I lean in and kiss her lightly on the lips. I thoroughly enjoyed meeting you, mystery woman. Normally, this is when I'd invite her to my room, but I have to get up at an ungodly hour and I can't miss my flight. She seems like the type of woman that would make me miss my flight. She pauses, perhaps expecting me to make an offer, but then taps the table and walks out. I take my phone out and text Susie. Me. I just spent an hour chatting with a beautiful woman and I didn't ask her to my room. Susie. I'm so proud, Shell, but it is fucking three in the morning. Me. Shouldn't you be asleep then? Susie, you'd think, but my ex is doing whatever the opposite of sexting is, and here I am. Me, I'm not good at sexting. Susie, you are not. Fortunately for you, you are good at the real sex. Me, sorry I woke you up. Susie, you're nervous for your trip, I understand. 
I don't get nervous normally, but she isn't totally wrong. I'm excited for this adventure I'm about to go on and feel some anticipation about what's to come. Me. Not nervous. Susie. Let me guess. You're making miniature porn at the hotel bar drinking cranberry juice like some weirdo. Me. Looks around the room for cameras. Susie. It's okay to be nervous about the important trip you're about to embark on. I can't wait to hear about it. You better post updates and pictures. Me. I will. I'm aware that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Susie. Okay, go to bed. Leave me alone. I'm proud of you for not sleeping with the random woman. Me. She wasn't random. I'm proud, too. My dick feels less happy about it. Susie. TMI, bro. Text me when you get to your destination. Me. I will. Thanks, Suze. I put my phone away, carefully put my work in the small toolbox I carry everywhere, and head to my room. I fall asleep imagining my new fiery-haired friend in some of my favorite poses.